Hi, good evening everyone. Good evening everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, you are all welcome to that? Yeah, good evening. Good evening. I think I can see uh, some old friends here. Okay, so you are welcome to um, this uh, median Power BI webinar please to enlighten us how Power BI is helping to make um, data visualization very easy, right? And this is to whip your appetite. I think we all have been using Nestle and other uh, visualization tools, but Power BI in this sub-region, that's Africa, is merging and I think it's of good that we all embrace ourselves with the modern technologies. So we are welcome to uh, um, to this Power BI webinar and feel free in the course of the of the presentation you'll be given a chance to present. I'm Benedict um, Boache Aka and on the other side you see the um, other presenter that is Joshua who will be presenting to us. Okay. So you hear more about Power BI okay from today and we have started the JB Tech Academy with a, we have vast backgrounds so we understand the terrain that we, we, we are in, right? Um, I happen to have a background in computer science, education and finance and, I, and now we try to specialize ourselves in the business intelligence, data science and machine learning of which these are the reigning staff and ongoing you can start learning about this um, new areas which are trending you can search on google and now most of the trending jobs you see around this and it doesn't necessarily mean they are going to resume a role as a data science as a data analyst right and we had two presentations already of which we highlighted on the role of data science and data analytics in today's business and today we are here to talk about just the Power, uh, power BI aspect, right? So on our last webinar, I did display this webinar. I did display this chart to um, the, the the team that joined, right? That joined, and this chart mainly focus on the role of data analytics in today's business. At first, we used to have uh, business intelligence mainly in organizations sitting in the IT department. But today, the corporate environment has changed, whereby we now even see the data analysis and business intelligence sitting right within the business, that is the finance department. So if you look at this chart of which we've already looked at in the previous webinar that we, we had, we have a chief finance officer sitting on top and right, if it trace to the right button here, you see business intelligence. What is the business intelligence doing to help make um, forecast and planning prediction and other work so the responsibility include gather analyze and compile data to ensure uh, management have been driven with that data driven so even here in Ghana um, during the COVID time here our president um, Excellence Nanado Danko anytime he delivers his speech making reference to data right so data has become relevant to all sector and it's as well good we all harmonize ourselves with the new terrain irrespective of your background. So business intelligence or data analytics is right here with us and this is to psych your mind and also to uh, as well expose you to what tools are available and what we can do with those tools. Right. Now these are the skill sets when we talk about um, data analytics right you need to ensure you are good you can do analytics with excel power bi tablet and the normal powerpoint how you can sell yourself communicate with this powerpoint um joshua my other colleague is here who in about three minutes time will take us through how we can use the power bi which is the purpose for our garden or the purpose for this um, webinar in the future i'll be taking you through other um, subjects of interest like how you can use Python and SL and other stuff, right? So um, this chart mainly look at the, the tools. So we have the SQL and Python. We as well leverage on it well. 
Um, so we need to process and how we can use this. And in terms of the soft skills, we can talk about you have an analytical mindset, you think and um, reason like a business person, how you can ensure the data that you have, you can communicate accurately and also you understand people's strategy, their mission, their objective, right? And how you can uh, translate these statistical methods into how you can use to solve business goals. Now at JB Tech, we offer this training and ensures that we train people in analytics, in SL, visualization with Power BI. Uh, we do machine learning and also visualization with Python and as well as SQL analytics. Right. So the next session of the presentation, which is the actual deal, why we've gathered here, we'll look at how we can perform um, analytics with, with um, Power BI. Okay. And as I've just run through this short presentation, uh, my friend Joshua, who is also a partner to JB Tech Academy, will take over the next session. We are, we are hoping not to keep you long here, but to ask for what's your appetite and also let you start the journey. Um, we, all, we all should be data driven. So please feel free. And anytime you have a question, you can stop him right there, ask any question, and we are here to provide any, uh, to provide answers to them and ensure that we are all in a data-driven journey. So you are all welcome. On that note, you are all welcome to this evening's um, webinar. Stay blessed, and we hope we, we have interactive session. So Joshua, over to you. That's good. Good evening to all of us. Uh, it's good to have us on today's meeting and also to demonstrate and to show you some few visualizations in Microsoft Power BI and how you will be able to use it to analyze your data to provide a an insightful uh, to your clients that are going to visit the dashboard. <laughs> so in a second, <laughs> I will be sharing my screen pretty soon. I'll be doing it this way. I hope you all can see my my screen. Admit. 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 Okay. Yeah, Joshua is visible. Yeah, Joshua is visible. All right. All right. Fantastic. All right. So today we will be doing just a few visualization. So this is just a sample dashboard that was designed to create visuals of food and beverage sales for a company. So we are inside our Power BI. So if let's presume that we want to start from the beginning or we want to upload uh, a data from our Excel file, we assume that this design is not showing here. So if I want to upload a data, to come to the get data. So over here you see that there are multiple ways that you can get your your data you can get your data from an excel workbook you can get it from power bi data set you can get it from data flows data verse sql server that means you are pulling all your data from your sql database okay so these are some of the platforms that we can use to 
um, upload our data into Power BI. But with this, we have the data already uploaded inside the Power uh, BI. So the first thing we will do is that when you come to the left panel over here, we have these three keys over here. We have the one who is called the report view. So the report view allows you or helps you to be able to see the visuals. Then we have the table view. The table view shows uh, all the tables or all the data that you have uploaded. So when you click on the table view, you to the right panel you will see all the data that you have uploaded and then the tables that are included in the data then with this we have the model view the model view simply allows you to be able to add your relationship to your various tables so if they are any uh, let me use the word key IDs that are showing in other table, then you can match these tables together with the sense that when you are trying to drill down um, your visualization, when you are trying to drill down, when you select one um, data or when you select one component on a visual, mm -hmm. the other visual should be able to respond based on like the linking of the relationship that exists between these tables. So that is for the start. Now, when the data is uploaded, okay, there will be a need for you to transform your data. Transformation of data simply means that you are just trying to clean the data to check if there is a redundancy repetition of data in your table that you have uploaded, or if there are some columns that you don't want to keep in the data that you have uploaded, then you need to clean it. So when you come here, you see transform data. So when we yeah, so when we talk about the transformation of um, data, you know, in organization you usually have, as he said, the redundancy in data. Uh, there are a lot of stuff that we have junks in data. For instance, in your system, you may have less employee uh, ID right being collected by the. There could be a situation, but whereby you have reputation in certain um, data that has been collected, right? So in our previous webinar, we tried to touch, I think we have different audience. We try to touch, uh, look at what really goes to the data transformation. That is the main work, how your data will be trans uh, transposed or how the reporting, how the reporting is going to be, is mainly depends on um, um, the transformation. Just imagine you work on national uh, register and we have repetition, people are taking double pay and other things. So once you do the transformation, it helps you to clean off all the bad data. It could be that, for instance, uh, an ID uh, should have been in, in let's say, alpha numeric, but it's appearing in different formats. So during the transformation, you're able to reshape how the data should look like. And other things that um, in our previous webinar we did talk about. So it helps you to really ensure your data has been really harmonized. Joshua, are you in the right position to continue on it? Just a moment. My network is, uh, I think that's why I'm having a problem. All right, so let me. Okay, so once he's tried to fix that, uh, let me then take over to, to provide more context here. So in data analytics, as he's trying to elaborate, you have to get the data. As a data analyst, data has to be cooked for you. And you show us the various sources that we can get the data from. So the data could come from your Excel sheet, it could come from a CSV file, it could come from your database. You could even mount the data in your Google uh, Google Drive or from the web, right? And you get it. So data analyst, we are not the one to prepare the data, right? We have the role of a data engineer and big data analysis, right? So yours is to consume the data. You have so your starting point is already built data, right? That you leverage on. Now, once you get the data, you have to then either transform or load the data. The transformation is when you ensure that the data is in its right shape, right? And once it's in its right shape, 
now you then load for the analytics and visualization, right? Then you provide the interpretation to it, of which that, that his first dashboard that he was showing us shows the report. So before you get to the report, meaning that you really work on the data and you ensure that the data is well situated for um, better visualization to communicate right to your audience. You know what? Okay, nice. Okay. So as I was explaining earlier, so this is the table that we have uploaded. So as my colleague was explaining, if there are some any redundancies in the table, that this is where we can um, clean it from. If we want to take off some of the columns that are here, then we take them off. Then if there is any duplicate uh, data or values that are in our table, we can as well take it off from this place. Is that okay? Any questions? Any questions? Hello. Yeah, hi. Hello. Yeah. So I want to ask that good evening first. My name is Seth Eshen. I want, to, I want to ask that if there's no duplicates, is it advisable to still go ahead and do the cleaning? No, if there is no duplicate and there is no nothing specifically to do, then there will be no need for you to clean the data again. You just proceed with your uh, visualization uh, design. That's all. It, it, yeah, so Joshua, let me add on to uh, that. Yes, yeah, so under transformation, we do the data cleaning, right? So in the data cleaning, you can talk about the duplication, you can talk about the errors in data, you can talk about the nows. For instance, his current screen that he's showing, assuming that on row two, which shows the ID of 111, there's no, uh, let's say, number there. Although we are seeing as empty, but the total count, assuming there is a total count of transactions that has been made, all those nows will be as well be counted. In a situation whereby, let's say this 111, assuming it should have been a unique, let's say, transactional ID, we know that anytime you send Momo, anytime you order pizza, anytime you order something from online, you are being given a unique ID. Assuming this column, the other ID field or column is expected to be unique. And there's a situation whereby there has been redundant or there has been duplicates, then it's called for you to take off. When we are performing all those activities, we say we are cleaning off the data, right? We are cleaning off the data. Now, under transformation, we as well do data um, modeling. Modeling is how the data behavior should be. It could be that, for instance, he was showcasing about three columns. Out of the three columns, you can build up on those three columns by combining some based on maybe you want to write a function, maybe uh, a function that will generate new column out of the existing. So now you have created a behavior that is subsequently, if there's a new data that comes in there, it should behave that way. It should split or it should create issue. The data, some, some should be generated out of the function that you write to another place. We have something called the data under the data transformation. We have the data wrangling. Now, how should the data be reflected if you want to visualize? So on a data wrangling, the entire thing that has been just talked, how, how data should be uh, well situated, right, before you can report on. Know that if you don't do a correct job with the data visualization, your report or your visual is also as well going to attribute to that end result. Okay, so that is a, a, a more one that I wanted to provide. So just you can, you can take it. Oh, okay. Right. Set any question, any extra question? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Is any question for anyone else you can ask? We want to have an interactive session. Any questions? Yeah, George, I think we can continue for the sake of time. 
Uh, all right. Is my screen showing? Yes, it is showing. No, like it's not showing. We have not posted anything yet. But we can see you. Oh, okay. Just a moment. Sammy, were you trying to ask a question? You, you, you were asking whether the screen is showing. Then you were asking whether the No, there's no question. Okay. Josh, your screen is still not showing. I think technical issues. It should be showing now. Still, I think network problem. Is it showing now? Yes. Yes, it's showing. Okay. So this is the visualization aspect. Okay. So the first thing we want to look out over here is that we have what we call the total revenue. So how do we do this? So for us to be able to do it, we call something measures or DAX. The DAX simply means that data analysis expressions, that's the DAX, data analysis expressions. So before you can calculate or you can find for the total value, you create what we call the measure. So inside the measure, that is when you call, let's say your columns or your rows. So for us to be able to do this, we have what we call the sum function. So as you can see over here, for me to find the total revenue, I use the sum function, so which means that I am telling uh, the system or the Power BI to sum up this particular column for me. So it means that when we go to the sheet one, we have a column called sales amount. Okay. So I'm telling the Power BI that it should go there and then sum up this particular column for me, which is the sales amount. Then now it is the responsibility of the Power BI to now calculate it and then give me the total uh, revenue that we are seeing over here. Is that okay? Any, any questions? Sir, can you go over again? Can you go over again? So we said we want to visualize or want to calculate for the total revenue that your company has generated since it commenced business. So now when you load your data, your data contains rows and columns. So now I said for us to be able to find the total revenue, it means that we need to sum up all your sales that you have made. So we call something measures, okay? So we are going to create a measure. The measure simply allows you to be able to use that, which I, I said is data analytics expression. So they are formulas. They are formulas that you use to be able to create your measures. 
So when I said one of the method or the functions that we can use is a sum function, which allows us to be able to calculate for our total revenue. So how do we calculate for this total revenue? So using the sum function, I'll have to indicate where my sales amount is in the table. So as you can see at the top over here, when you start typing the system automatically we call it intelligent it brings whatever you are typing so 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 i said sum so now what do i want to do what do i want to sum so you can see that there is a pop-up that shows so you can go through and look for what you are trying to sum up if you've seen it then you hit the enter key so i am looking for sales amount I think this, this it is it is here. So once I've found it, I hit my enter key and then it populates the where I am typing. Then I close it. Once I am done closing, you can see over here that there is a tick, a commit sign over there. So once I click on it, it saves my measure for me. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, I'm okay. Thank you. So once you are done with this, you come to the visualization panel. So when you come there, you notice that you have a lot of charts over here. So with your experience or your expertise, you use the one that you think can be used to depict your visualization. So I will come here. This is card. So I can select the card. Once you click on it, automatically it appears over here. So if I want to see the total revenue, all I need to do is to scroll through my table and see where the total revenue uh, measure that I've created is. Once you've seen it, you can take it once you take it, it populates your fields for you. Any questions? Okay. So I believe we'll proceed. Now, so we have calculated for the total revenue. Now, since it is in currency, and maybe you want to use decimal. I was there. Yeah, I was there. Sorry. So, the total revenue, is it the, what your company has given to you that you have made the cleanup? Or after you make the cleanup, the total revenue to is separate? Okay. Is it separate data? I want to know. Is it a separate data, or you are still using the what one that you have claimed from the company or your or institution? Is the is the same data that you will be using? So when okay, you get okay. the data okay. from your company and you are done cleaning it, that is the first part. Now the question you ask yourself: What do you want to do with the data? that you have, what does the company wants you to do with the data that you have at hand? So as an analyst, the first thing, okay, maybe probably they want to know the revenue they are generating from their company. So if that's the first thing you want to do, then it draws you to what we did just right now to create a measure to calculate for the total revenue that the company is generating. Now you can find this value in the data that was given to you. So as I said, that when you start typing here, when you start typing here, you can see that there is a pop-up that shows. Can you see it? Yes, yes sir. Okay, so these are all the fields that are inside the data that was given to you by your company. So they are already inside your data. So what are you trying to sum up? That's the next question you have to ask yourself. What are you trying to add? 
which of the fields or which of the columns are you trying to add to get your total revenue so you begin to scroll through until you find the field or the column that you want to sum up are we on the same page yes yes sir all right so now since we want to find for the total revenue that means we are looking for something like the sales amount so once you find your sales amount you hit the enter key then it populates the field for you you close it and then you hit your commit key so once you hit the commit key the total revenue measure is created for you so now to visualize it you come to the pane over here where you can see a lot of visuals over here so you select the one that you think can repeat whatever that you are trying to visualize so for me i want to use the card so i will click on the card the moment i click on the card it appears on my field for me so you come back to your right panel to select or to click the total ribbon the moment you click it it shows the amount on your card for you are we on the same page yes sir all right so we'll proceed so there are some times when you do your summation automatically it does not come with the currency form some gives you the whole number so if what you what you are calculating you want it to be in a form of a currency when you come to the top here you see that there is a currency symbol over there when you click on it the drop down a drop down comes that allows you to select the currency that you want to operating or you want your your visuals to take so if it is the cd you want you scroll to look for the cds the moment you've seen it you click on it just a moment All right, so we proceed. Sorry for the inconvenience. So now we are done with the total revenue. There is another thing that we call the slicer. The slicer allows you to be able to drill through your, your data to be able to select uh, a specific coordinate to depict uh, a value based on the data that you have so you can see over here we have three buttons that's what we call the slicer so when i click on this you realize that the values are going to change can we see that yes so when i click on this one it will give me another value i explained earlier that in designing your visuals there are something we call the relationship, which you can find at the model view. So the reason why you, you are seeing the values changing is because these tables are linked together. So anytime that I click on one, it gives me a different value. So this is what we call the slicer. The slicer allows you to be able to drill through your visualization to be able to get different results pertaining to whatever that you are doing now the next thing i want us to look at is we have what we call the stack bar charts which are used to depict the flow of uh, information on your visualization so i select this one we have the total revenue and total orders by quarter so for us to be able to find this we already calculate for the total revenue 
so how do we get this chart to show you come to your visualization you select one of these So since you have the data already, you can come here to select anything at all that you want to depict. So as you can see, as I select the things keep on changing in the chart that I have selected. And when you hover over it, it gives you the product name, and then the total orders that you have had or you, you've made sales for. Any questions? Any questions? No question, you can proceed, sir. Okay. So now we need to have a knowledge or the data insight. So my colleague will be giving you a keynote on what data insights are. So Ben. Yeah, Josh, thank, thanks so much uh, for the wonderful work. We don't want to keep them so much, so let's look at the data insights and we'll close and we'll continue some other time. So I'm sharing my screen. Guys, let me know. Let me know when we're able to see my screen. Okay, so like Joshua was trying to depict this, another dashboard that we were trying to... Um, just to play around a data that we had from Tanjo. Anything that you see here, the logo, for instance, this is not for Oracle. We just used to demonstrate had this from Google. It's not this data is from um, Kanjo, right? And uh, Kanjo is an open data platform that we use for research and our own personal. So anything here is not based on Oracle. That is a disclosure. So, like Joshua was trying to depict in here, we have a sales dashboard that we're trying to play around. Now we have states, right? So for instance, if I'm, this is the total portfolio cost sales that has been made like Joshua's phone. So for instance, I want to know sales that came from San Francisco, a particular state. Once I click on, let's say San Francisco, you see the entire dashboard, the data as well, be focused. So when you talk about data, data analytics providers or Power BI providers, the ability to do insight of data. So anything, any chart that is on your dashboard, the rest of the visualization will be focused on it through data or through the focus on the exact thing that you want to look at for. For instance, San Francisco is telling us that this is the total sales that came from them. In the 13% received discount. So we have something here showing discount. The total number of uh, people or transactions that received a discount who did not receive 87% 80, from people who transacted from San Francisco received discount. For instance, I click on Boston and as well, the data as well focus on the entire portfolio cost. How much, how much came from Boston? What was the sales volume, right? Which product did, did they purchase? For instance, this chart is showing um, products that were being purchased. So you can see that most transactions came, that, were, that came from Boston focus on what? iPhone and Google phone. So the rest has been distributed in this chart, right? Let me move on to a similar slide. So here we as well added um, you have the ability to embed Google Maps. So you have a map here, even to tell, for instance, during COVID time, you see most of our screens, you see where the number, the hotspots were coming from. So you have the ability to even embed a map right here, right? So once, for instance, I still click on the same Boston, 
it tells me within the Boston geographical area where the transactions actually came from. I click on Los Angeles and it tells me where the transaction came from, the numbers, which part of Los Angeles the transaction came from. I have a table respecting the product that were purchased, uh, that were being sold to Los Angeles. And you can see the product, there are some, based on the data point that you actually want to see, which one were discounted based on certain uh, threshold, right? So probably I've said to this way, for instance, I have a chart here showing even uh, the month, which month usually do people really perform more transaction from? And I can run, let's say, click on Atlanta. Everything and all the charts that are on your dashboard will also be focused on. So there are a whole lot of stuff that you can do with Power BI, of which this webinar is just to provide enlightenment, right, about these visualization tools. Not to say the Power SL, the PowerPoint we are doing is not good, but we are in a data transformation era whereby data plays a lot and everybody wants to. At, a, at any given point in time, be guided with data. And even now, the tools, the software that we buy in our company, everybody wants to see that, oh, do you have a dashboard? Can you build a dashboard for us to see how this data is being transmitted and how we can really leverage on, on, on data? So we are saying that the lives of Power BI and Tabular can help you make data well uh, projected to ensure you are doing well and you are aiming at performance metrics, right? So in the future, we hope to provide you with more insights. For instance, I just click on February, the month February, transaction that came in the month February. You can see across the dashboard, all the data was all be um, hoover on it. I know it's late, some of you went to work and we don't want to keep you much. So we just open the floor for more questions and um, we want to have an interactive session afterwards. I think we can then end the session and you hear from us on our uh, future webinar whereby we are planning to talk about uh, how um, SL, we can use Python to en enhance visualization in SL. So you, you hear from us, like we also, as we've talked already, um, we are so trained people how you can master yourself with Power BI, SL analytics, Python, and SQL. So please, um, there's a bootcamp also upcoming if you want to take just Power BI, if you want to take just SL, if you want to take Python, if you want to take SQL, we are so available. So you can contact us anytime. And if you want as a group, we also work and our price are very, very affordable. So thank you, everyone. And feel free to ask all questions and you can start on your own. Thank you very much for joining this webinar. Open to the, um, the class. I think there are more questions um, right here. Robert, I can see your hand. Robert, you, you, can show, you can show your face. So, in okay. fact, before Robert comes in, Robert is one of the guys, one of my students who is doing well. And I think Robert studied which which program do you study, Robert? Business management. I, business management. Business and now, management. Robert. Yes, Robert is still in school. I think now going to four hundred. Robert can use Python, can use Power BI, can use SL. So, I think. Like we, we saw from the earlier presentation that you have. So uh, you can also learn. It's not an IT based skill. Everybody needs data analytics. So, Robert, over to you to ask your question or we can comment as well. Yeah. Um, please, my question um, the first one is on data security. Okay. So, my question is. Hello, Robert. How. How about your network? Yeah. You are breaking. Oh. Oh. How about your network? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Let me mute him. So if if anyone else has a question, whilst Robert faces network, you can as well ask comments. It has security. And they comply. Yeah, hello. Hello, Robert. If I got your question right, you're asking how data can hello? be secured or the yeah, Robert, come again. Summarize your question. I think we're breaking the course of your contribution. 
But if I got you right, your concern is about who have access to the data, right? How secure the, um, the data is. Are you asking how secure the data your organization have or once the data comes to the dashboard or once you have access and working, who ha should have access? Is that your question? Oh, guys, okay. um, I want Robert to clarify. But if anyone has question, you can ask for us. He's trying to fix his network. Guys, let's make this interactive. Hey, Seth, are you fine? Dinah? Okay. Yes, I'm okay. Okay. Yes, I'm okay. Okay, okay. Uh, I think we have some few guys right here. So, uh, Robert, are you back? If you have still have an issue, you can contact us. Okay, guys. So thanks once again for making. Boss, time. boss. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah, boss. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. This okay. just came to my mind. After okay. you have finished the assignment from your company, how can you utilize it for your, for your company to see that this is the job or this what you have worked on it? How can you utilize it to the company? Okay, so this this is a Microsoft product. I know most most companies in Africa, right? Leverage on Microsoft product. So once the company base, you need license, right? Once you have license, let me go back here, right here. Once you have license, you can publish. I don't know whether you can. Am I sharing my screen? Okay, I think so. You can publish the the report or the dashboard. To the rest of your organization to have access to right once your company have license to um has power bi license you can publish anybody in your organization with your organizational domain you know if you are working with let's say xy company you see your mail will have that if they have the microsoft power bi license anybody at all in your organization will as well have access to that report so it's easy you can publish it right you can publish it to um, um your cloud, your Office 365 um, environment. So it becomes easy that way. But if you are, let's say, I know Microsoft also give the educational account. So for instance, students, if you're a student, you're here, you can create a Microsoft account with your students' um, uh, email and create a Power BI account. And in there, once you do your, your, your dashboard or your report or your visualization dashboard like this, you can also publish, right? You can publish for the rest of, all the people within that network with, with your school with your school id or with your school email they all can have access to it that is how that can be done all right so it has the the functionality the publish where you can share either mail if they also have let's say microsoft have microsoft teams you can share it on teams anywhere and all that matters for instance you have your data hosted in your company sharepoint or onedrive all that matters is you go to the location where the data is. Once you update it, you are still going to, uh, they, you don't, they don't need to. So the dashboard will be there and the data will be refreshing in real time. So you build an ETL, you can see that every 24 hours, you should go to the, the source of the data. You should go to the source of the data. And I'm going to to you. You should go to the source of the data and check for updating data and refresh it. You can build that interval. And it, they are all available uh, once you have the license version. But if you, don't, if you don't have the license version, you can still play with this desktop approach, right? Maybe you want to export this data in the form of a PDF and share with someone. If that option is also there. You can export, export is right here, export to PDF, and it will generate a PDF for you, right? So uh, zooming on each of the that we want to place more focus on, you can click on them and export Okay, let's export this to PDF and see as it is. So I've just exported the the dashboard to a PDF format. In PDF format, you know if you can't click on. It. So, but if it's in Power BI environment and you publish, people can as well click on San Francisco, and the data will be focused. The data inside to provide the insight that needs to be given, right? But you know PDF that we can't do that. That is out of that environment. So this is a PDF version of the dashboard that I built, right? This is a PDF version of the dashboard that I built. So you can share with someone.
by you. We have the student account or organizational account which is being subscribed to Power BI. We can as well go that route. I don't know whether I've tried to answer your question to some extent. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. But we, we are always available for more if you are trying to do any or get an issue. You can contact myself or Joshua. Um, I think it's, our numbers are on, on, the, on the flyer. So you can. Yeah, um, yeah, hello. Uh -huh. Yeah. My my question was on encryption. Encryption, encryption. Yeah, like how how um how is it possible for the company to restrict certain access to like its employees? On Power BI, you can show who should have access to what. Okay, you can manage the um, access rights. Who should have access to what? You can manage all those access um, rights in Power BI. Yeah, but in terms of the organizational data security, it's not the role of a data analyst. It's the role of information, system information security. Okay. Note that the role of a data analyst, you said you harmonize the data, you get the data, you transform, visualize. That's that is the journey. Security of data sits in different um, lineage. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any further question? Um, hello yes ask. please i want to ask if there are any pros and cons that you want us to look out for when we are using power bi okay so from now i would say that if you don't have the uh, license you know you really will not get for instance for instance get more visuals these are the, like joshua was trying to highlight on these are the chats at a good default you have access to but if you don't have the license, you can't get the extra. I have the license, right? Okay. So I can get more visuals. But when you try it, you're not able to get, and there are a lot of uh, ch uh, charts that are available for you to project better stuff. So I have the license and I can get those um, charts available. So if you are not, you'll be limited to this. But to some extent, you can also come out with your own charts. For instance, what you see right here, uh, images that you can also combine some um, uh, shapes, right, and the insects to come out. Guess that it will be nice as when you, are, you use the charts. So you can combine some of these based on how you want to come out with your creative stuff. But in essence, um, once you have the lines, you'll be able to do um, to do more, right? And I think yeah, we are talking about we are talking about lines, lines. Hey, so if you don't have lines, you can. That means you can't do it, right? Yeah, if you don't have license, this part of the interview here, you have access to Power BI desktop, right? You have license means if you if not paid for it, you still have access here, but you can't publish. You can't publish for your, for instance, you have the student account. Let me make your life more easier. You have the student account. You can still publish to maybe your school with XY University. They have given you a student account. You know, most of these companies allow for educational usage, right? We have education and we have a professional. So we have it, we can still 
go about right they allow you but for instance you have educational account and you're using this for let's say professional services you know the terms and conditions are well defined and now that if they find out you can you can be sued but there's a professional conversation and helps to as well highlight from that angle but as you explore more with it i think um doing visualization with so and doing visualization with power bi power bi is defined for visualization right so every tool every software have its own level of um uh, what we use it for so i'll say um power bi i'll recommend power bi or tableau for visualization in this recent uh, contemporary times than you using your normal so like we're trying to do the insight more here so it becomes more love this is this design or came out from microsoft and s also came out from microsoft and Excel also came from microsoft itself um, so this is a visualization to if i to so that is it robert i don't know whether you are okay yeah i'm okay but i have one more question okay ask yeah, I'd like to ask, what are some emerging trends okay. um, or innovations that we can um, look out for in the future? Pertaining yeah. No, so pertaining the gen data journey, how we can make data um, as a strong pillar in, in decision making. You know, all that we are talking about, we are not just looking at numbers. We are not all looking at the beauty. How can we ensure the data that are here are resilient and now can be trusted are in the right position to inform data to inform business how can we so in power bi we can do what we term as a uh, data warehousing whereby we are combining data from different sources and as well inform decision making so in the trending in the trend or innovative your ability to have big data analytics concept whereby you now can plug data from different sources merge them together so that for instance organization can have accounting uh human resource management system they can have different 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 system how can we merge all these data in the form of a warehouse and now give us an organizational informative or decisioning point that is those things and those things are coming from the big data analysis we require more engineering parts right how the data can come from the different sources and still ensuring that there's a level of accuracy that the data analyst these are different roles that i'm trying to mention and as well how can we leverage on machine learning right in here to do predictions so we have at a at a lower level we have key influences that which is a chart that is here that try to examine the data points that you all the variables that you have right or the column that you have and try to tell you that oh Anytime sales come from Boston, for instance, if you're used to use this, it says that had, if any it sales come from Boston, it as well will make you cross, let's say, your target that you've set, or all sales that have come from Boston usually receive. So it will show you the relationship, the correlation among the uh, the the var variables that you have or the call fields that you have to inform you that anytime it is so it studies your data. So machine learning are being inculcated here in advance when we are doing all these things. And you know, when you talk about machine learning, we are talking about the artificial intelligence. These are the training staff, how we can ensure that our organization can really rely on our dashboard for meaningful decision making. So these are the training staff for now, I will recommend for you. But I don't know whether Joshua, you can, you want to add up to the uh, emerging staff right here. No, okay. so as you have said, uh artificial intelligence, machine learning, data warehousing, and advanced databases are all emerging trends that are, are coming in the field of data analytics. So if you can leverage on some of, of these tools, uh, I believe that uh, we'll, we'll go far. And as he mentioned earlier, Python. Python is also another strong thing that you can use to go into your data analytics environment so he has said all so what i will also just say is that let us make time and then look into this emerging uh, technological environments that are coming then i think with that 
uh, we can make an informed decision on whatever we want to do in the field of data analytics. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Josh. So, Robert, back to your earlier question. You know, the manager, I was trying to look for this for you, manage rules. So, you can define who should have access to even where your dashboard, what factors for your dashboard, who should have access. So, that is also right here. Can you see? Create, change, delete security rules. So, who should have access to? Who should see the total sales once you publish? Who should see what? We are able to use this functionality to define who should see, add uh, users so that you can as well ensure you are not pushing out sensitive data to everybody. So some data have more confidentiality, assuming that you have personal data, showcasing the personal data. You know you can't sell out personal data on a dashboard for anybody at thought to see. So we use this secret functionality to ensure so on the dashboard who should see what, right? So it's under modeling and yeah, that, that, that functionality also sits here. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, guys, any question? We've kept you long on this call, but I know you've learned. We've tried to harmonize. We've tried to uh, bring in more things to to you for you to also decide on this merging um, um, technologies. Sorry for keeping you late, uh, but we hope to have more interactive session um, in the upcoming weeks and months. All right. So, Joshua, any final work from you? not much just want to thank them for making their time and we also want to stress that uh, jb tech academy is always open so if there should be or there, there will be a need for them to delve into this data analytics journey then jb tech is their first stop for them to be able to register and then uh, have the feel of the practical aspect of whatever that we've shown them today. So that's just uh, my few remarks that I will say. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, thanks, Josh. And guys, thank you all for making time with us. And uh, anytime you see our flyer for the next webinar, please don't hesitate to join for more. So on that note, have a good night. Okay, bye. Thank you, bye.